past week, we tested newest NVIDIA RTX 4090. New progress than 30 series. Current CPUs were bottlenecked under low resolution for many games. But just this moment, Intel reveals the 13th core CPUs. And we have got the newest i9-13900K. What about its performance? We will analyze its architecture and check it out in full drive. We'll manually limit power consumption. Simulate the performance of this CPU on mobile platforms. Perhaps this would be the performance of the laptops tomorrow. So let's begin. First, specs. The code of the 13th CPU is called Raptor Lake. They really like lakes. Just like the last gen P Core and E Core design, P Core still uses Grace Mod, but P Core upgrades to Raptor code. For process, 13th Core still uses Intel 7, but has equipped with 3rd gen of super thin transistors, making its clock speed run even faster. The turbo boost of a single P Core can reach 5.8 GHz. All core can reach 5.5 GHz, 6,000 MHz higher than former Intel 7 CPUs. That's a huge squeeze on Intel's toothpaste. But a remarkable part is the core's amount. The cores in all CPUs doubled in last gen. This i9-13900K has 8 P cores and 16 E cores. 20 for cores and 32 threads. 8 and 8 for i7, which is 16 cores and 20 for threads. 6 and 8 for i5, which is 14 cores and 20 threads. It seems like multi-core performance of 13th i5 is better than that of i7 last year. Huge progress and a giant leap. L2 cache also gets an upgrade. Each cluster gets 4 megabytes of L2 cache, which is 32 megabytes in total. This will help in some 3 games. For RAM, 13th gen still supports DDR4, which is a good news for some low pocket users. After all, D4 is cheaper than D5. DDR5 has a greater potential in Overlock, which is easy to do that. If you are reluctant to do the trial and error, XMP 3.0 can help you reach 6000C30 with only few steps. Initial clock speed increases from 4800 to 5600. No big deal for desktops, but for laptops, it's a good news that RAM got a speed up. After CPU specs, let's take a look at today's testbed. CPU, i9-13900000, ROG Maximus Z790 Extreme, RTX 4090 Common Version. Dual channel with two memory sticks of 16GB DDR5 6000C30. XPM on by default, 1TB Samsung 980 Pro SSD. VKGL360 Water Cooling. Super Flower Platinum 1000W. TTP3 Case. The side panel was removed to simulate an open rack. Like I said before, we will test the absolute performance first. Then limit the voltage, to simulate the performance on laptops. Ok first, let's welcome Cinebench R20. Wait 913900 OK, 15442 in multicore. New progress in 12th gen. Since E cores has doubled, with an upgrade in P core clock speed. Single core reached 863. Comparing with AMD platform, we tested it in Cinebench R23. Single core 2242, multi core 40395. Overall performance better than 12th core and AMD 7950X. What about its power consumption? Don't be scared of this. Under default settings, 310W after 10 minutes loop test in Cinebench R23. Temperature was beyond 100 degrees, which is a tough job for this 360 water cooling. We found that the default voltage setting is higher in this C790 Extreme. When running all P cores at 5.5 GHz, the CPU's voltage reached 1.3 volt, giving us room to maneuver. When lowering the voltage a little, the stress test consumption can be around to 70W, which is a little higher than last gen. With more cores, it should be like this. If we drop the voltage further, then it would be a test for CPU's parameters. But after set voltage limit, this 360 water cooling could handle it, showing that this i9 has more heat generation than the last gen. We also tested it in another motherboard. ROG Z790 Hero. Our 23 stress test to 69W. 97 degrees, for your reference. After the power consumption, let's move to productivity. For Adobe software, it reached above 1,500 in PS, AE, and PR. With progress in single-core and multi-core, productivity will get enhanced. As for Crossmark, 7-zip, and X-to-6-5 tests. 
13,900,000 also doing better than 12,900,000. That brings the first conclusion. With more cores and higher clock speed, both single core and multi core get enhanced. We have controllable increase in power consumption. The overheating in the 11th gen will not happen again after the productivity test. What about games at 1080p, 2000, and 4000 resolution? Let's find out its game performance. First, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 187 FPS in 4000. 278 FPS in 2000. 50% difference. But the F's different at 1080p is only 30 from 2000. 10% difference. Maybe CPU or RAM performance was bottlenecked. Then, Metro Exodus. 1080p, 2000, 4000 average F's are about 20% difference. Then, Cyberpunk 2077. This game is poorly optimized, but it still reached 230 F's at 1080p. In a higher resolution, F's witnessed a dramatic drop. With 169 F's in 2000, 80 F's in 4000. It seems like GPU is the leading role, with DLS turned off. 4090 cannot reach 3 digits at 4000. Total War, Warhammer 3 is like 2077. The difference reached 80% between 2000 and 1080p, but the gap between 4000 and 2000 is only 30%. New CPU is really working. Forza Horizon 5. The gap between 4000 and 2000 is 23%. The difference between 1080p and 2000 is lesser. Apex Legends. Fs was locked at 144. By unlocking, it can only go up to 300 Fs. But for 13th i9 and 4090, it can stay at 300 Fs at training ground. It only fluctuated slightly at 2000. Amazing! It fluctuated a lot at 4000, but can maintain the 40 Fs. Fs at the two rest games is dramatic. CSGO, no difference between 1080p and 2000. The gap between 4000 and 2000 is only 10%. Dota 2, the difference at three resolutions is tiny. All in all, this combination is the best of the best. It has no rivals. For games with a bad optimization, like Metro 2077 and Warhammer, 13th core will be helpful. After the games, let's test its performance under limit power consumption. We will set consumption limit to simulate performance of 13 CPUs in laptops. Because Intel uses the same cores in its 12th gen desktop CPUs and laptop CPUs, we can look forward to H55 CPUs next year. Maybe Intel will choose this 24 cores and 30 to threads mix. What about its performance at low consumption? Good or bad? Let's keep the original voltage and lower the memory speed from 6000 C30 to 4800 C40 to simulate a laptop. Then using PL1, PL2, and Tau to limit the consumption. We set four levels, 45W, 65W, 90W, and 135W. Then we got this table. 45W, our 20 multi-core reached 6275, 8136 at 65W, and beyond 10,000 at 90W. For last gen, it need to OOW to be on 10,000. Thanks to the double D cores. The multi-core performance is impressive at low consumption. It reached 12,230 at 135W. Huge progress than the last gen. But the clock speed was normal under low voltage. P core only reached 3.5 GHz at 90W since the actual laptop CPUs always doing a better job. And the voltage curve should also be more aggressive. The actual performance would be better than this. We should expect the performance of the real 13th gen laptop CPU. So what about its game performance? Let's check it out in CS, go. We tested in GD77 at 960p. It reached 800 Fs with i9 1 to 900HX and 3080Ti with same limit. Fs didn't change at 90W. It reached above 1100Fs. When lowering to 45W, Fs dropped a little, which is 904. Still better than the last gen. Excellent performance per watt. The voltage curve should be optimized. We tested some old CPUs. i7 10870H and 3080, 5.3 for Fs at 960p. CPUs have leaped up a lot over the years. 
Okay, after all the tests, I think you have some takeaways. Let me conclude. For process, 13th gen still use Intel 7, but 3rd Super Fin became mature. Elevating the turbo boost a lot, P-Core reached 5.8 GHz. 600 MHz improvement over last gen. Cores. Among all the 6 CPUs, core amount doubled in the last gen. Multi-core performance improved a lot. Energy consumption. 360 water cooling is barely enough for i9 at full load. After optimizing the voltage, the temperature drops. Aptop simulation test. Multi-core performance is good. For games, as the most powerful CPU, 13,900,000 was still bottlenecked at 108 OP. But after F's reaches three digits or more, this difference is nothing. Let alone its remarkable performance under low power consumption. If the same strategy is adopted for next year's laptops, CPU performance will be further improved. Let's expect the laptops with this top mix next year. Okay, that's all for the first test of the 13th gen desktop CPU. Please hit like and subscribe to our channel. If you want to interact with me every day, please follow us on WeChat official account to provide info and guidance. This is Biba Laptops. I'm Juan. See you next time.